Okay, so here's a secret. Getting that first software engineering job is even harder than learning how to code. Basically, when you're in the job search process, the whole world is against you, especially if you don't have any experience. Make sure to watch all the way through the end. I'm gonna break down the whole job search process step by step, and also give some tips that will be really, really effective if you implement them. So number one, this is a given. I would say you definitely have to spend 50% of your time studying. There's the algorithm section, which is basically doing leak code and other problems like this, and also figuring out the patterns to do this so you can implement them over and over. The first portion of studying is focusing on algorithms. This can be done by practicing leak code problems or doing cracking the coding interview. But the nice thing here is there are only so many algorithms that are out there. Once you start seeing patterns, these do get easier. It's great to practice these both on a whiteboard and also on a computer. So you can really get used to the different environments that a company might provide you when you're doing questions. Next is building applications. So this is great to use for a portfolio, but it's also really good to figure out how to gather your thoughts and talk about these during an interview. The more apps that you build, the easier they'll get over the time and the more advanced ones you can start building. The last one is the system design section. There are tons of resources online for practicing system design. And there are also websites like Pramp where you can go practice interviews with actual people. These are mock interviews. If you do these mock interviews, you'll be so much more prepared for phone screens as well as on-sites. Part two is getting the phone screen and also passing. Now getting the phone screen, there are two main components to this. The first one is having a great resume. The second one is having great projects. There are three main things that you should put on your resume when you're talking about technical things that you built. Number one, what is it? Number two, what technologies did you use to build it? And number three, this is the most important one, what was the actual technical benefit of the things that you built and the technologies you implemented? Once you've gotten that out of the way, let's focus on projects. So if you have a handful of great projects, one of the best things you can do is also make a video that goes along with it. This is something that I ended up doing when I was working with applications. I really do think it helped me stand out from the crowd a little bit. Videos take a lot of effort to make and they're a little bit scary too. So how many people do you think actually make them with their projects? Probably not too many. When you're in this hyper competitive environment, it's so crucial to figure out how you can stand out from the crowd at every step of the interview process. Now here's one thing that you can do that is the most effective out of anything in your application process. If you get referrals, this is basically a back door into the company. This will help you skip all the painful applications online, getting filtered out by robots on the internet. Message people on LinkedIn, find their emails, send them an email, show them you're excited and enthused and ask them to get a coffee. You'd be surprised how many people actually say yes to this. Another great thing you can do to stand out is basically take the code you had in that phone screen and refactor it. Chances are you probably didn't write the best code you could in the phone screen, especially because they're time pressure. So if you can take that code, refactor it, make it really perfect and send it back in, that will also help you stand out a ton. The goal is to stand out at every single step of the interview process. So now we're at the onsite, you've made it. This is the final step, the most fun, but also the most stressful. So honestly, the best thing you can do here is just stay calm. You've already done the practice interviews. So coming into this, being stressed will not help you at all. You'll probably fail. And honestly, people do the best technically when they're in the most relaxed. Literally the whole goal here is to work together with your interviewer. You want to be asking questions, challenging assumptions, and basically working with them to solve a problem. This will really show them how you think and also how you communicate, which is mostly what they're looking for. If you can show them that you have charisma, that you're genuine, and that you're a great communicator, these are the qualities of someone that they would want to work with. The last thing I did during my onsite, and I think this was the cherry on top. I basically took all the names that I interacted with. There were two sections. There was the technical portion and the soft skills portion. I think I interacted with about eight people at one of the onsites where I got a job. What I did is I took down all of their names. I tried to find their emails and I couldn't find their emails. I went onto their LinkedIn's and I sent them personalized thank you letters. If I were at a company and I interviewed someone and got a personalized thank you note, it at least shows that they took the initiative to try to stand out. At the end of the day, if your interviewer is filtering between 10 different people trying to figure out who gets the job, this is one thing that would probably stick in the back of their head. Hopefully some of these tips were pretty helpful. I think the biggest takeaway is try to figure out how to stand out at every step of the interview process. The competition is really rough. 
I heard after the fact, once I got my first job, that there were 600 people who were given phone screens that they basically had to filter down. If this was helpful, make sure to hit that like button. It really helps out. And also don't forget to subscribe. Comment down below if there are any other videos that you want me to make. And also check out this other video, the fastest way to become a software developer.